and welcome back to All About Community. Again, my name is Robert L. Harris, and I am your host. When we went to break, I was talking with uh, Councilperson Reed. We were talking about some of the vacancies that uh, in the city of Oakland in terms of uh, uh, cleanup, et cetera. Uh, could you just expound for just a moment on that and how people may apply for some of those vacancies? Absolutely. There's an opportunity. We have over 700 budgeted vacancies within the city of Oakland, meaning we've already set forth the funding for those jobs, and it's a matter of getting people in and through the process to actually hire them. Uh, we hire a lot from internally, and that creates more vacancy gaps for us, and so we've got to get out into the community. Certainly, you can log on to the city of Oakland's website and look at the jobs that we have available, over 120 in the Department of Transportation, paving, engineering, uh, contracting with the construction teams that work with us. We've got over 120 in public works. We've got significant vacancies in planning and building. And we also want to fill our Oakland Police Department vacancies with Oakland grown community members and serving our own community. And those are vacancies as well. And so one of the things- Perhaps that how many do we have in the uh, Oakland Police Department vacancies? We have less than 700. We've got a mandate to have at least 678. We just graduated a class of 30 and we just started a class of 25. And so getting those vacancies filled with those who represent and reflect and will ensure that we lead out with public safety that's trauma-informed and certainly constitutional and public policy. safety is a real issue. Last weekend, somewhere around there, I believe around five or six people were yeah. killed. So what's going on with this homicide rate here in the city of Oakland? What do you plan to do about it? I mean, we are being terrorized. We are being terrorized. From every corner of the city. Certainly in East Oakland, we felt the weight of that for, mm -hmm. for many years. And yet that fear um, has paralyzed this entire city. And so we've got to do more to ensure that there's accountability. One, we've got to make sure that we've got adequate resources in place, right? Making sure that as mayor, we budget at least four police academies to keep that flow of Oakland grown officers in that pipeline for our criminal investigators. We've got 500 unsolved crimes. That is impactful for those who have been victims and those who are seeking justice. We need ceasefire fully staffed. Ceasefire no, is that. What is Ceasefire doing? Ceasefire, and explain Ceasefire Ceasefire is audience. one of the strategies that we have that actually works to reduce the shootings and homicides and bringing those in who we have identified as causing crime and influence and violent crime in the community and giving them an opportunity to take a path away from crime and into jobs, into housing security, into emergency relocation services, into life coaching, into healing and trauma care that they may certainly need. There's a number of different paths that we can provide to support those to get them out of that path of violence and engage in healthier ways in the community. We also need 911 dispatchers. We certainly have not had that adequate ability to answer the phone and give someone the insurance that they're being heard in the midst of trauma. The data shows that those who call OPD the most are black women and that we call in the midst of trauma and we are re-traumatized when someone doesn't pick up or there's no response to us. And when I came into office, we had over 400 calls not being responded to that we couldn't- On a daily basis? On a daily basis. There were weekends where we had 400 people from East Oakland calling in and not getting a response. And so when I came in, that cry to deliver more resources, to get a refund, as taxpayers were saying, on what they have invested into the system was very critical for us. Expanding macro, when I came into the office, macro had not launched. It's our mobile assistance community responders program of Oakland. Non-police officers who are going out to engage and to support us without an officer responding for them to keep their focus on the priority one violent crimes. We've expanded that, we've launched it. Launched it in East Oakland, launched it in West Oakland, and as mayor looking to expand that type of program citywide. It's doubling the investment in violence prevention, intervention, and healing and trauma care. This last well, year- What's going on with the violence pre prevention program? Uh, we partner with community-based organizations. Ceasefire is a part of that disrupting, intervening um, investment that we're making. And when I came into office, I declared and had the support of city council that it's a public health crisis for gun violence. And so that was a part of the community's cry to not only put a charge on Oakland to deliver more historically into Department of Violence Prevention and Intervention and Healing Trauma Care, which we did over $17 million, but it also called on the county 
to invest their 300 million American Rescue Protection Act funds into Oakland. Reentry services, job services, mental behavioral health care, uh, rental assistance programs to keep people preserved in their housing, affordable home programs, mortgage assistance programs, substance abuse. Are there mortgage assistance programs? There are, and those funds are exhausted. And so we've got to tap deeply into state and federal programs that allow us that ability to keep people housed and housed permanently, including affordable home ownership. My first home that I had um, was an affordable home ownership. I had no PMI, I had down payment assistance, I had a tax abatement for 10 years. That's how you help to create generational wealth equity and opportunity in communities that are really impacted. Now what about, uh, when we talk about public safety, what about the, the uh, chief? I guess he's now a little over a year old in the mm -hmm. job. You think he's up to the task? Absolutely. Chief Armstrong, Why? he's from the community. He's been working for the community. He brings uh, certainly that lived experience of what he has endured personally, and he brings that leadership experience of, of having come up and seen how the system has worked and has not worked for us. He came in, and what we've seen is certainly more diversity and inclusion from our community in the police academies that are coming on. I've seen him on the ground. I work consistently from day one with our Area 6 captain team, going to lineups, doing ride-alongs, working with his team, and seeing him investing in ways where council has not supported fully public safety measures that we have asked for in parts of the city. I have seen him work to reorg that department. Well, we've had uh, Chief uh, Armstrong on the program here. Personally, I'm very impressed with him, and I'm rooting for him to continue to work. He needs the resources <laughs> to get it done, though. Indeed. Uh, we're going to have to go to break, so don't touch that remote. As a matter of fact, just put it down. We will be right back with All About Community. Again, my name is Robert L. Harris, and I am your host, and my guest is Councilperson Reed. We will be right back.